Hi, and welcome to Worship with Temple United Methodist Church in San Francisco, California. I'm Rev. Dr. Kelly O'Connor. I'm the pastor at Temple. We are continuing today in our Lenten season of recovery, trusting that God is weaving all things together for good. As we look after our health and work to be well, we will be ready for whatever God is bringing to new life. Thank you for joining us, and I pray that you will find in this service some holy space in which to meet and worship our awesome God. Welcome. Long times of difficulty can impede our ability to stay creative. The picture of our lives is dulled and hope for a brighter future can fade. We need a touch of inspiration to awaken us from our sleep as we hear in one of this week's healing stories. We also awaken to our agency to seek out the divine healer, reaching out to touch the power we know can restore our intellect and imagination. We emerge ready to re-engage the world, seeking and seeing solutions, creating different pictures of life, life renewed, just as a mosaic artist creates beauty from broken pieces of glass. God of all possibilities, made in your image, you have tasked us as co-creators of a better world. You bestowed imagination and the ability to learn and progress. But we're tired. Our energy and enthusiasm wanes. The call for ideas, solutions, workarounds, and adaptations has been non-stop for us all whether we're needing to find new ways to keep children engaged and well, or figuring out how to maintain a passion for our work in the midst of these trying times, or needing desperately to undo systems of oppression too long affecting our lives and the lives of our neighbors. Not only are our livelihoods, but our liveliness is at stake. Too often we want to give up declare it all too hard and simply isolate, waiting out the time for better days. It all feels overwhelming, and so we look away, sometimes even from the needs in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our energy reserves. Forgive our cynicism. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for ourselves and for one another. In this silence, our God, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Amen. Know this. We are gifted with agency to affect healing in the world, no matter what. We are not alone, and we can join with others to magnify hope. Christ will answer when we call, when we reach out for what we know can help. 
for you, for you, for me, and for all of us. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you, and breathe out with a relief of assurance. I invite you to magnify the warmth that surrounds you, extending to those closest to you. Then imagine it extending beyond your walls, to the neighborhood, to the city, and to the world. Brothers and sisters, may this deep and abiding peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Hi friends, it's Mr. Mark again. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your faith community so that we can explore healing together through this season of Lent and hopefully through the entire year of 2021. Oh wow, can we use some healing. And normally this would be the, the part where I would say, here's what I want you to get ready and we'll need it later, but I wanna wait because I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes what we're going to do. For now, I'd like us to join together in that very healing act of breathing together, really inviting the healing power of that spirit breath into our bodies so God can heal us from the inside out. Let's all breathe in through the nose. One more time. I love to play. Do you like to play? And I don't just like to play. I need to play. We all need to play. Play isn't just for fun. Play brings joy. Play reminds us of the power of being in the moment. Play is a spirit-filled opportunity to see something not simply for what it is, but for what it can be. Play is about possibilities. And you know, during hard times like this, and this past year has been a very hard time, we can get really focused on all that we don't have. We can get focused on all the things that we don't have access to that, were, that aren't available to us. And we can start to dwell on those limitations that we didn't ask for, but are a very real 
part of our lives. But God has placed something really powerful in us, a healing power, the power of creativity. Now, we remember in our Bible that we are created in the image of a creator. To be created in the image of a creator is to be creative. Stay with me. I'm going to say that one more time. To be created in the image of a creator is to be creative. We all have that creative ability in us to, to see something not simply for what it is, but for what it can be, to see possibilities. And, you know, sometimes when we feel so limited, it, it, you may think, well, now we can't be creative now because we don't have anything. Do you know limitations actually help us be even more creative? So let's flex some of those creative muscles that God gave us. And here's what I did and what I'm going to invite you to do at the end of our time together. I got a bin and I went around on what I call a stuff safari. And here's what you do. Just go around the house looking for little odds and ends, maybe old, some old things, some new things, some things that are headed for the recycle bin. And make sure you have your grown-ups permission. Nothing sharp or breakable or flammable. Um, no pets, please, but go find some different things around it and go on a stuff safari, bring back a bin, and then together with, with maybe your family or just you on your own time, see what you can make of some of the different objects that you found on your stuff safari. So here's an orange plate. What do you, what do you think that could be? Think it could be a sun or a giant orange is trying to eat my head? Or, hmm, what about this? There's an oven mitt. Gee, I wonder what Bible store I could tell with the oven mitt. Or, ooh, look at this. Huh. Ooh. Ah. So, friends, try this at home. Try this at home. Go on a stuff safari around the house. Gather things together. Maybe you can find enough things that you can put on a puppet show for your whole family. And with so many things closed, it's important to remember to stay open, to keep our hearts open, to keep our minds open to all the possibilities that God has put in us. Let us play and let us pray because play can be a very healing act, and so can prayer. We're going to use the prayer that we've been using through most of our time of Lent. It's an echo prayer. I'll say part, and I'll do a motion for some things, and you simply echo me. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving God, we come to you with hearts, hands, minds, and souls in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out. <sighs> so that we may reach out to help heal your world. Amen. And you know, one way we can help heal God's amazing world is by finding those recyclable things or things that were headed for the trash that we can use to keep out of landfills, to have fun with, to play with, to see the possibilities. So go play, go on a stuff safari, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mary Rainsky, the treasurer and lay leader here at Tempo. Thank you for joining us for our worship this week. Temple is a church that has continued throughout the days of sheltering in place to feed the hungry and to reach out to those in need. We are so grateful that you have placed the church in a place of priority, understanding the work we have to do. Remember that we are not only here to receive your gifts as grateful as those are, but to also serve you in times of need. Please let us know if we can help serve you. If you can give at this time, there are two ways to do so. One is by mailing a check to 65 Beverly Street, 
San Francisco, California, 94132, or by going to our fantastic website, click on the yellow donate button, and that'll take you to PayPal, and you can make a payment there using your debit or credit card at no cost to you. And then once again, it is um, Course Sunday this week, and we mailed out to, to you these pamphlets that you can return to us indicating the small amount of money that you want to give, $5, $10, $100. It's up to you on what you want to donate. And you can also indicate that it should go to the Snow Fund. The church has gotten a group together with Encore and decided that funds payable to UMCOR for the snow group should be used for purposes of the churches that are snowed in, that are impacted, the, the families that are, it just is enormous on what they will do for you. And also remember that 100% of what you donate goes toward what you donate. Not one penny goes to administrative fees. That is picked up by the conference across the United States. And once again, thank you for all you do and have a wonderful Sunday. Each week we will offer contemporary quotes that support our theme, Holy Vessels, and offer you some thought-provoking words of wisdom. I hope these words reside in your heart and your spirit and offer you some food for thought throughout the rest of your week. From Antoine de saint Expiré, a single event can awaken within us a stranger totally unknown to us. To live is to be slowly born. From P.D. Ospinsky. When one realizes one is asleep, at that moment, one is already half awake. From Dr. T.P. Chai, get out of your comfort zone. Wake up the sleeping giant in you.
Glory be to God. Amen. Hello, saints. It's prayer time. Healer of our every ill, especially our malady of exhausted spirits, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for the healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that you are already at work among us, showing us the way to recover from the toxicities of grief of our time. You remind us that we do not have a shoulder for everything alone. We give you thanks that we all must do this orientation ourselves toward the divine spirit to accompany us, touch us, inspire us, and heal us. We pray especially for all those who feel opportunity and possibility is cut off for them, whose spirit is continually dampened and damaged by those who fail to see their value, their contributions, who steal away rights to the fullness of expression. Lord, we give thanks for our communities, churches, nonprofits, and businesses that are supporting and flourishing all our voices, especially voices that have been silenced. We give thanks for courage of innovators who use their resources and creativity to make more good in the world, making this a priority over profit. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort and now and in the future. We pray this day for the joy that Tom and Sue Rickard are able to enjoy more time with their children and grandchildren as many because of the various vaccines are able to spend precious time in person with family and friends. We ask for prayers for Bill Crane, who has undergone a cornea transplant this week. Bill and Lucy's son, Will, who continues to fight a battle with bladder cancer. The whole family needs our prayers at this time. Carl V's father is in the hospital. Please pray for him and the whole family. We'd like continued prayers for Aaron and Linda Lewis. Aaron is recovering after surgery in the hospital. I'm asking for prayers for my friend Stephanie's Auntie Winifred, who has suffered two heart attacks in the past week. Pray for her. We like prayer for the whole church worldwide. Let us also pray for Tia as she is completing her college education and theological education. Prayer for her time management to give her strength. We are asking for prayers for Jim, who is undergoing chemo for pancreatic cancer, and Michael, also undergoing cancer treatments. We're asking for prayer for Mark, who is transitioning from this world, and his wife, Ellen. For Dr. Ojo's stamina, we're praying for Deborah Manicure, who will be undergoing hip replacement, and Roxanne at the loss of a family member. We are praying in general for all who are seeking mental health treatment and more bonding relationships. God, 
hear our prayers. And as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us so many years ago, our Father's prayer, the Lord's prayer, will you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for prayer today. Whether it's your morning, noon, or evening, we here at Temple are praying for you, and we hope that you are praying for us. Have a great and prosperous week, and we will see you soon. Goodbye. I'm reading from the ninth chapter of Matthew, verses 18 to 26. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put aside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. We're becoming pretty familiar with these healing stories now in our fourth week of studying Matthew. We know Jesus heals through touch, and that faith in God's ability to heal can make us well. But this narrative from the Gospel of Matthew that we're looking at today has some distinctive features of its own. The first, according to Walter Wilson in his book, Healing in the Gospel of Matthew, is that this is the only account in Matthew of a person being raised from the dead. Jesus has the power to heal from illness and also has the power to overcome death itself. A second way that this story is unique is in the way it weaves together these two healing stories, the revival of the girl and the healing of this bleeding woman, bleeding for 12 years with no relief. The characters in the story are very different. One is a powerful man, a leader in the synagogue, who interrupts Jesus' dinner to ask for help. A man that Jesus then gets up and follows. The other is a woman, an outsider, too embarrassed, too humble, too meek to ask Jesus for help. She just reaches out to touch Jesus's cloak, knowing that if she can just touch him, touch his cloak, that she will be healed. I think we can assume that Jesus and the man speak at some point, but the gospel only talks about Jesus' words to the woman. He speaks to her. He touches her. He heals her. The story about resurrection is interrupted by and interpreted through this story of this woman being saved, of being made whole. 
I love that these two stories are woven together because to me it shows once again that Jesus has come to show God's love for all. A powerful man, yes, but also an outsider, a woman. They were both heard, both cared for by Jesus. And the fact that he stopped on the way to the powerful man's house so he could care for this ailing woman just shows the depth of his compassion and the overwhelming power of his love. Yes, he can heal, but he can also bring new life out of death. Imagine the joy in these two households as they live with new vigor, new deeper faith, and the love of Jesus embedded in their lives that they will now live. It can feel impossible to imagine that we might emerge from these exhausting times with new life, with vigor and creativity. But creativity can also happen when we're forced to prune and cull and prioritize because we are exhausted. What things have we been holding on to in our lives or in the church just because we've always done it that way. And in what way is Jesus calling us to new life? In this season of recovery, what is being reawakened in us and in our church and community? What will rise up? What is being saved? And for what purpose? What will we leave behind and what new things will we now usher into our lives? And what will we do with our newfound healing? May God direct and guide and inspire and motivate us to hear and grow into the new life that is springing forth. Amen. I dream of a church where everyone is welcome. I dream of a place we all can call home. I dream of a world where justice is flowing, with hope and peace growing, and God's will is done. I dream of a church where everyone is welcome. I dream of a place we all can call home. I dream of a world where justice is flowing, with hope and peace growing, and God's will is done. Make it so, make it so. We pray for that day. Make it so. We dream of a world where love reigns among us, and your will is done. Oh God, make it so. Oh God.
Friends, we are about to take communion together. We are a Methodist church family, and in our communities, all are invited to the table. All are invited to participate in this sacramental remembrance of Jesus' Last Supper with his friends and disciples. Please pause the video if you need to now and collect the elements you will need. We most often use bread and juice, but anything you have will be fine and will be blessed to the nourishment of your soul and body. Let us begin. Our God is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. In the beginning, you breathed life into raw materials, creating and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, your holy vessels, were fired in a kiln of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, we find ourselves broken unable at times to remember your promise of repair. You remind us time and again that though break it broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your Spirit anointed him as a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those who were considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the path of healing and recovery, delivered us from our despair and isolation, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always. In the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are not alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the healing, life-transforming acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us your healing spirit through Christ, healing agents in a broken world, offering the lifeblood of hope. By your Spirit, God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, healing God, now and forever. Amen. And now if you'll take your bread or meat or sandwich, whatever you've brought, it doesn't matter. Take and eat. And take your drink and drink in remembrance. Amen. Make us holy.